it it doesn't seem like you probably grew up really understanding how money works, how to treat money, what to think about money, how to shape your mind around money mm -hmm. either. Was that because you, you, I mean, as humans, we model what we see. That's just, that's just true. Mm -hmm. So you, if you're saying, oh, money's coming in, but it's not going to groceries, it's going to meth or wherever it's going mm -hmm. or other gals or whatever, then you, you're not learning as you grow up how money is supposed to work or at least how regular people treat money. Mm -hmm. Was that something that, how, how did you get yourself on track there? You just, you're just doing a, a debit credit analysis every month. Like, well, student loan, rent, food, f fuel, zero left over. Yeah. Got to save. Can't, can't spend any money. I mean, how did you start? How did your mind start to shape? Cause you're big and you talk a lot about, how you think about money, mm -hmm. your mindset about money, all mm -hmm. those types of things. And I'm not just talking about like having an abundance mindset and just, you know, if yeah. there's an extra 10K, then go buy 10K in Google ads or whatever. <laughs> I'm talking about actually making it part of your thought process where you understand and you can kind of see how it flows. How did that, how did you evolve mentally in terms of understanding and figuring all of that out. I think most people either have the same money mindset as their parents growing up because it was kind of ingrained in you or you have the complete fucking opposite mindset because you saw it and you were like, nope, not me. So I think that's part of it. It was like, I just wanted to be the opposite of them. But, but also just like learning and growing and like I – always am reading like 10 different books and a lot of them have been on money and money mindset and how money works because I was so adamant that I was not going to be like them. I was not going to go bankrupt multiple times and I was not going to, you know, be in debt, although I found myself in debt after college, um, but got my way out of that. Um, and so I think just always, always being a white belt is like my saying, you know, just always learning no matter what. That's a great saying. Yeah. And and I also think every person has their own money minimum. So like some people are okay with their bank account overdrafting by $100. But if they overdraft by more than $100, it's not okay. Or some people's minimum is like they need to have $10,000 in their bank account and it cannot go under that. And so I think I just have a different minimum and I've always raised my minimum so that it's like no matter what happens like shit can hit the fan but I will never be okay with anything less than that and I think if you put that out in the universe I'm getting a little woo woo with you but no. I think if you if oh, you I'm put woo -woo that out as there fuck, man. okay good. yeah ayahuasca whole nine yards oh, I haven't guy, done that yet gotta do it you gotta I I'm not ready I'm gonna do combo you if gotta, you've heard of combo yeah. uh -huh. but yeah, not you got to really. wait for it to call you. Yeah. But when it calls your name, you should definitely answer. Yeah. Yeah. So change your life. So I think everyone just has has different lifestyle minimums, money minimums right. that they're OK with. And like you ever when you were younger, like and I'm sure you've had a point in your life where you were poor or, you know, trying to make ends meet like you somehow always made it. And that's because like that was your minimum. Like you could. Maybe you had $25 left in your account, but like you still ate and you still paid your rent and you still like somehow paid everything. And you look back and you're like, how did that happen? But somehow it always worked because that was your minimum and that's what you like accepted. 